All right, so just a quick recap of yesterday. For the next two days, we are on, we are in volume. So somewhere on, somewhere in your notes, somewhere on a piece of paper, I want to make sure you get this copied down. I've got some function f of x bounded by these two vertical lines, x equals a and x equals b. And the new idea for the next couple of days is we're going to take this region and we're going to spin it. We're going to spin it around some axis of rotation. A lot of the ones we're going to look at today are going to be the x-axis, but it doesn't have to be the x-axis, and tomorrow we're going to look at other ones. But for example, if this is your axis of rotation, I always like to draw that little like loop-de thing so that you can see what I'm spinning around. Now, where I struggled as a calculus student senior year in high school forever ago, forever ago was I never knew what the shape looked like. I never, ever could go from the two-dimensional to the three-dimensional. So my, my first question, or my first bit of advice is, don't worry about the whole shape. Think about a slice. So I always think about like this one little rectangular slice here. Take that rectangle and you spin it around the axis of rotation. What do you get? Well, you get a 3D thing, but what 3D thing do you get? What you get is a, a cylinder. Now, I can't draw a cylinder. I'm not going to be able to draw a cylinder, but if you're like really focused on what does it look like, what you do is you take this guy here and reflect just the rectangle over the axis of rotation. So it's about that. It's not going to be perfect. And if you want to get a sense of what's happening, you're just going to connect the top of this piece to the top of that piece down there, just to kind of get a sense of the three-dimensional piece. Um, this guy right here, since they're touching, we're good. So are we getting a solid object or a hollow object? Solid. solid. We're, getting, we're getting a solid object. So I'm going to ask you several times today, solid or hollow. And when I, when I ask the question, I want you to say, is it solid like a fist? Or hollow like this? There's a piece that's missing. So in this case, do we get a solid object or a hollow object? Solid. Solid object or a hollow object? Eric, which one? This should be solid. You're, when you, it's solid, you want to think about the volume of the cylinder. And the volume of the cylinder is pi times r squared h. Which is why for a problem like this, it's going to be pi integral. For this problem, what's the radius of your cylinder? You go from your axis of rotation, the center, all the way out until you hit the curve. Like that's, that's the radius. So here, you start in your axis of rotation, and you go all the way to f of x. That's your radius. The radius in this case is f of x. So we're going to have pi times f of x squared. The height, the thickness of the cylinder, when you hold it this way, is the, the dx or the, the delta x here, which is why our volume formula is going to be pi times the integral of f of x squared dx. Why is it squared? Because the volume for a cylinder is pi times your radius squared times the thickness. What does that say? Volume of cylinder. <laughs> is everybody good with the setup? Pi times the integral of f of x squared dx. The only thing that's missing? Your limits of integration. Where do you start? Where do you end? In this case, where do we start? Where do we end? You're going to go from A A to B. That's the volume for a solid object. Carlos, are you good? All right. Well, what if I took a similar curve, still f of x, from x equals a to x equals b, and I move my axis of rotation down here. Say this is the line y equals negative 2. That's what I'm spinning around. That's the region that I want. How's this different? How is this different? You've got that region up above the x-axis. 
your axis of rotation is down here at y equals negative 2, if you spin this guy around your axis of rotation, what's different? You have a hole. hollow. You got a hole. So we're hollow. Solid or hollow? Hollow. Hollow. As soon as you recognize hollow, well then you're leaving this idea of cylinders. <laughs> okay, so we've got a hollow object. Let's see if we can sketch it. This part I want to make sure you get at least a little bit of practice with. Take your rectangle. Take your representative rectangle and reflect that rectangle. But reflect it across your axis of rotation. Not the x-axis. So here's my rectangle. Here's the gap. There's the gap. Draw the rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is the original rectangle. That's going to be the reflection. Then I'm going to connect the inside pieces, and I'm going to connect the outside pieces. If we were to imagine this going all the way around, what's the shape? Is it a cylinder? It's a washer with holes. It's a washer, right? It's going to have this shape. You've got like the big circle, and you've got the hole like the toilet paper. Well, the way that you find the volume of a hollow object, Jackie, is everybody able to see this? <laughs> Yeah, well, eh. Yeah, no, okay. Okay, think about your washer. The big radius starts on your axis of rotation and goes all the way up here. So that's big R. So my volume is going to be pi times big R squared dx from a place to a place. The problem, though, is if I call this my big radius, you're treating this washer as though it's solid, as though there's no hole. Are we okay with this idea? Yeah, everybody's okay with this idea? Okay, so how do we fix it? We need another integral, and what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to subtract off like the hole. So this is going to be minus pi times we're integrating from A to B. And we always start on the axis of rotation, and now tell me when to stop. When right here, right? That's the small radius. That's going to be like the radius for the inside part that you subtract off. So it's going to be minus pi times little radius squared dx. Okay. Now, some calculus teachers like this way. I want you to have a conversation with the folks near you. What just happened? What do these other calculus teachers have in their kids do? Don't talk to me. Talk to folks around They combine. They combine. Is it okay? Yes. Is it okay to go from here to here? Jackie, why is it okay to go from this to this guy over here? Um, because instead of having like two separate integrals, you just have one, so you combine both of them. So you're going from two separate integrals to one. Why is that okay, though? They're still subtracting each other, though. Well, they're still being subtracted, but there's more to it than that. The limits of integration, the boundaries, what Jose just said, they're the same. Okay, so integration says, yeah, I can do that with subtraction. Now, what about the pi? Right, it's pi times this minus pi times that. I can factor the pi out in front. And both are multiplied by dx. And both are going to multiply by dx, so it's all good. Go with this version if you want to. Go with that version if you want to. Doesn't make a difference to me. And all the friends are good? Yeah. All right, so take out the calculator. See what you can do with this problem on the bottom of page 15. 100% calculator active. The bottom or the top one? Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. 
With all of these problems, my advice is going to be the same. Make sure you understand the region. Region R is bounded by the function f of x equals 2 plus sine of x. That's the graph over there. The x-axis and the vertical lines, x equals 0 and x equals 6. If the x-axis is your curve, x equals 0, x equals 6, there's the region. You've got the region. What are you spinning around? X-axis. Spinning around the x-axis. So that's your axis of rotation. Question for all the friends, before you pick up a calculator, before you take action, solid or hollow? Solid. solid. Everybody's okay with solid? Yeah. Last class, some folks weren't sure. The way that you're going to make the determination, does this region touch the axis of rotation the whole way? Absolutely. So good. You know that this is solid. So then your volume, you know the setup. It's going to be pi. You get an integral. From where to where? Hold on, Dylan. From zero to six. Whenever it's solid, it's just going to be your radius squared dx. The question you're going to figure out, what's the radius? You start on the axis of rotation, and you go up to the curve. How long is that slice? Three. Well, that one might be three, but that one's probably not three. The idea with these slices is you're looking at just representations. You're looking for a pattern. How long are all these slices? Every one of these slices starts on the x-axis and goes all the way until you hit the curve. So what's the radius? The radius is just f of x. You're starting on f of x, you're going all the way down to x equals 0. So this is going to be pi, integral from 0 to 6, 2 plus sine of x, the whole thing squared. In terms of how I'm going to award points, if you get the integram correct, first point. If you get the constant and the limits of integration correct, one point. Last thing, it's calculator active. Type it into the calculator. Everybody needs to plug this into the calculator. Yeah, I can get done. So the way that you're going to determine that, Delia, you're just you're going to look at the region. And does that region touch your axis of rotation the whole way? Right. So you've always got this region touching the x-axis. It's going to be solid. If there was some place where it didn't, and you're going to see somewhere it doesn't, hollow. All right, I need to see this on the calculator. Come on. Prepare to we get on the calculator. You got it? What you got? 85.7449. Yeah. 85.7449. 85.7449 or 85.745? Okay. Honestly, on the quiz on Wednesday, quiz on Monday, one point for the integrand, one point for the constant and the limits, one point for getting the number on the calculator. How many guys honestly have 85.7449? Your calculator is doing the hard work for you here. Bet them. So, you know, when we put it into the population, right? Yep. Did you get quite solid? It... No, the college board is not usually that picky. If you write equals, it's fine. Honestly, if you have this and then you don't even write anything, they probably still give you the point. Approximate versus equal, they're not going to make a big deal. Everybody's okay. All right, so I just want to give you guys a lot of practice time with different kinds of graphs. So look at model problem number two. 
Now, let's call this challenge by choice. If you want to use your calculator, feel free. Most of the problems that we're going to look at today, you don't need a calculator, and I would expect you can do without the calculator. But if you want to give yourself, if you just right now you're like, I'm on the struggle bus, use the calculator. Okay, problem number two. x-axis and the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 3. Ash is off to a good start. Eric is off to a good start. If you understand the region, it makes everything that much easier. about everybody that I saw has that region. That's what you're going for. Okay? And your axis of rotation is the x-axis. This is going to make a difference. My question to every single person in the room right now, and I just want this to become a natural question you ask yourself, when you take this region and you spin it around the x-axis, solid or hollow? Solid. solid. We're good with solid? Yes. Okay, Jackie, one more time. Why is it solid? Uh, because it's rotating at the x-axis. It actually, it's not because it's rotating about the x-axis. Oh, because it's touching the x-axis. The region is touching, not the x-axis, the axis of rotation. If I moved the axis of rotation, it would be hollow. Everybody okay? Okay, so we know that it's solid. Next two points is if you can get me, like, what's the setup? You're doing volume, not area. We're going to do an integral. From where to where? From 0 to 3. From 0 to 3. Don't forget the pi. If you're going to make a mistake, it's going to be forgetting the pi. Okay. Already you've locked in first point. Now I've got to think about my slices. So think about a slice. Or think about that slice or think about that slice. So those are all the radius with the rotation. How long are they? X squared. Right? They all start on the x-axis and they go up there, so the radius is x squared. So this is x squared squared. x squared squared. Second point. Now it's your choice. You want to just type it into the calculator and get an answer? Fine, feel free. You want to use your calculus skills? Go for the calculus skills. I'm going to finish this off with the calculus skills. Pi integral from 0 to 3. x squared squared is x to the 4th. Integral of x to the 4th is 1 fifth x to the 5th. From 0 to 3, don't forget the pi. Big parentheses, minus big parentheses, pi times one fifth of three to the fifth, minus pi times one fifth of zero to the fifth. All that's zero. Three to the fifth is, I think, 243. And it's going to be 243 pi over five. In terms of the calculus, not hard. So it's, is this the answer for the calculus? What'd you get for the calculator? Wait, I think you want to be careful because we changed the function. Yeah, you No, you've got f1 of x squared. You just want x squared squared. What are we going to say? Pi times r squared dx. Oh, I got it, 152. That's what you're here for. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's a good question. So if we were, if I was doing this for real in the free response, you get a point for finding the antiderivative. This should be an easy. One. Your next point comes in at the plug-in part. After that, there's no more points to earn. As soon as you do the evaluate, you've locked in your point. Anything that comes after this, all you're doing is saying, hey, maybe I'm going to throw away my point. Because 3 to the 5th might be 15 to somebody. So here's where I'd stop. But on multiple choice, I need you to get to 243 power over 5. What are we getting as a decimal? What's the calculator tell us? 152.6814. And all the friends are doing okay? Do it by hand if you want to, if you want the push. I'm going to expect you can do it by hand, but right now I also want to make sure that you've got the calculator skills to pick up the points, especially because so many of the points come from do you have the setup? Okay. With that said, try number three. We'll talk in a bit. Yeah, I'm coming down later. Okay. Um, is the radius always going to be the function? No. The way that you determine the radius is you start on the axis of rotation and you go until you hit the end. Right? Like when you draw your slice, your slice goes from here down. And so you figure out how long that is by doing top minus bottom. Problems are supposed to be calculator inactive. When the volume in the solid, when the region f of x equals square root of x, well, you guys know what that is. G of x equals negative x plus 6. And the x-axis. Revolve that around your x-axis. Yeah. We'll talk about. It. We'll talk about. It. Is everybody okay with the region? Okay. We got the region under control. Now you got to spin it. You gotta spin this region. Solid or hollow? Solid. Solid. For sure solid? Yes. Completely agree that we're solid. Yes. What does it look like? It looks like a cone? Yeah. A kite. A kite? It's not a cone, but it's like an ice cream. You're taking this and you're spinning it. There was something I was hoping was gonna come to mind right away. Ashley's really close with this. And I wish my calculus teacher had stopped and asked me, like, what does it look like? I don't. Take this region and spin around the x-axis. You got this line over here, and you got that curve. What, what, what comes to mind? A what? Maybe it's an ice cream cone? Okay, if it doesn't look like an ice cream cone, you got to get out one. Or a snow cone. Okay, it's a snow cone. Same thing. Right? You've got a cone, and you've got the ice cream. Or you've got a cone, and you get the snow. Go get me the volume. Yes, you can do this. You just have to get clever. Trust your instincts here. That's look. We have the intersection for man. Just cross out. Can you do that? It's not a cylinder. It's not even a half cylinder. One third of in there. 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 No, it's a half of a sphere. One third of in there. 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 One third of in
I think he's looking at us to wait for somebody to get. All right, we've got some good ideas happening out there. Just about everybody's got pie. We're doing an integral. From where to where? Here's zero. Yeah. Caitlin's saying integrate to the intersection point. Other people said go from zero to six, and I think the six the significance is this guy over here. Zero to six, zero to the intersection point, zero to some other place. The way that you're going to decide, look at your slices. Think about your slices. How long or how tall is that slice? How tall? That's f of x. How tall? How tall? How tall? How tall? G of x. Did you? There was a change. Yes. It was f of x over here was the height, but over here it's g of x. How are we going to handle that with calculus? Split it up at the You're going to split it up at the intersection point. So right here, I want to break it and say, here's region number one, and here's region number two. And you maybe already found the intersection point. The intersection point is four comma two. Did you graph and find the intersection? Okay. So your volume, we're going to find volume of region one, volume of region two, volume for region one, pi. We integrate from where to where? Zero. From where to where? From zero until the intersection point. What are we integrating? What's the radius? f of x, so that's going to be square root of x squared, plus, now talk about volume number two, it's another integral. We're going to integrate, it's pi times the integral, from where to where? From four to uh, six. From four, four to over to six. So we're going to go from four over to six. What's the radius over here? You guys already told me that was what, g of x? Yeah. So negative x plus 6, the whole thing squared dx. How many guys in your groups honestly had that or were like super close? I think we're moving in a good direction. In terms of the points, probably one point here, probably one point here. Understanding that you've got to split it up is probably going to get you a third point. The last point, go give me the number on the calculator. I really want us to focus on the setups, but also make sure you get the calculator skills. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what we did. We're focusing on like the ice cream part in the first region, and then like the cone part in the second region. Right. But the tech, I understand, the volume here is different than this volume over here. I completely agree. But how you find the volume and how you find the volume in terms of calculus, it's the same because both are solid pieces. It's pi times the integral from a place to a place, radius squared. Pi integral from place to place, radius squared. Technique the same, different answer. Okay. Is it 32.51? Yeah. 33.5103? 33.5103. Okay, once you've got 33.5103, like you actually did the calculations, move on. Just keep going. I need to make sure everybody's got the calculator skills. You want to use them? Yeah, keep going. I just want to make sure everybody's got the calculator skills. Yeah. And then honestly, to know what to do here if you were going to integrate by hand. What do you got to do? What would you say? Square to x squared. Well, square to x squared. You could say x to the half squared. Square of x squared. Square of x and square of x is. Square of x squared is just x. It's left. And then you have to integrate x. How do you integrate x? 
So you're going to get one half x squared. Uh, plug in, plug in. Over here, you're going to have to multiply it out first. And power. Keep going. Everybody should be on number four. Love it. Perfect. Have faith. Trust your smart particles. I don't have faith. Right. Oh. Let me see. Is this what you got? Oh, it's it is a wrong thing. Right. Basically, what I just wrote here is what you need to basically type into the calculator. And your calculator does all the work for you. Like, okay, we know it's going to be hollow when you like right here. Oh, oh, wait, 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 okay, so, it's wait, let's treat it, why don't we treat it like that, and then you subtract this from it, right? Yes, okay. You get it? Yeah. Trust the smartest particles. I was like, we just stop it right here. No, I just treat it, just treat it like this, and then subtract it like this. Está más en la rodilla. Está en Okay, are all the folks in the room okay? That's the region. And you're spinning around the x-axis. And the question for everybody in the room, hold on. Solid or hollow? Hollow. Solid or hollow? Hollow. Hollow. You want to look at the region. You want to look at your axis of rotation. Is the region touching the axis the whole way? No. No, then that's why you have hollow. There's a gap. So the volume for a hollow region is always pi integral big R squared minus pi integral little r squared. We need to know the starting and the end points. We're going to start at the origin. This guy over here should be x equals 1 when you find the intersection on the calculator. Volume is going to be pi. Integrate from 0 to 1. Think about that little, that little rectangle. That little rectangle is spinning around the axis of rotation. The way that you can do that is just take this guy and reflect it so that hopefully you can see this a little bit more. Right? It's hollow. We're getting the washer. Everybody's okay with the washer? Yeah. So tell me about the big radius, which starts right here and goes all the way up to the curve. How long is that big radius? Starting on the axis goes to the square root of x. Square root of x. How long is the small radius? X squared. The X radius squared. is X squared. X squared. And so your setup, you're going to say pi times the integral from 0 to 1. Square root of x, the whole thing squared. dx minus pi, the integral from 0 to 1, x squared squared dx. Yeah. So what I did is uh, exactly the same thing, but it's uh, integral of uh, square root of x squared and then minus x squared squared and then all dx. Dx, and you still went from 0 to yeah. 1 times pi? That'd be the same thing. Does that work? Yeah. Yes. yes. Same thing, right? It's that conversation we were having before. The limits are the same. They're both getting multiplied by pi, so do it this way or do it this way. I think the, for a lot of students, I see they like this way better because Jackie and I were having a conversation, and Jackie, you said like you saw it as like this. Yeah. First getting spun, so like solid. 
and then you said, now I'm going to subtract off this part. And everybody should be okay? Mm -hmm. Anybody get a number on the calculator? I got 0.94, but I'm not sure. 0.94, is there more than that? 25. 0.9425, can anybody confirm 0.9425? That's those got 0.9425. All right, one more problem. We didn't get anywhere near here last period. I'm thrilled that we're getting here. Model problem number five. See what you can do. Now we're rotating on the y-axis. Okay. Isn't it going? So you just square both sides and then square root. But it wouldn't be the same. Not really because you're going around the y axis and all the x axis. But are you talking about so it's the, the volume? Oh, it's because the volume is going to be the same. Can you see if they're going to say anything? Yeah. Because I'm saying it's going to be the same. It doesn't matter where it is. It'll work. It'll be that same. Am I right? This is what? But I don't think this is. I'm going to reserve you just for a little bit. Ah. I'm going to leave you dangling. First. What are they? Wait, is it going? Wait, is it change? Is it subtraction? 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 So usually at this point, somebody in the class is like, this is the same problem as before. Yes. Jose, why is it not the same problem as before? I just changed your axis of rotation. You are spinning this way. But it's not, because it's volume, right? Which changes everything. What? If you're spinning, think about this for a second. If you're spinning this leaf, Around the y-axis, what quadrants are you talking? Are you looking at? One and two. One and two. It's one and two. When you spun around the x-axis, it was one and four. Now it's one and two. So if you are gifted in the arts here, your slices now go this way. Do the reflection. Don't get all OCD about it. That's your reflection. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. You're right. Is everybody okay about what's happening? Yes. Yeah, we're going the other way. Your rectangles aren't vertical anymore. They've just gone horizontal. That's the clue. If you've gone rectangular slices, what just changed on you? Radius. Something big has changed. We used to go vertical. And now we're going horizontal. We played around with this with area earlier this week. Everything now is dy. Everything is dy. Your limits of integration are in terms of y. Your radius is in terms of y. Everything when you do this now is in terms of y. Okay, so pi. We're going to integrate from where to where. Y values now. Now down here, and it's a little confusing, right? Because the or the intersection is zero zero at the origin. But I want to make sure this is clear. Y equals zero. Where do we stop? Mm -hmm. Not at the Y At the Y value for the intersection point. This is where maybe you want to have it on your calculator. This does intersect at one comma one. And that's why I'm going to write my limits as y equals 0 and y equals 1. You don't have to, but I'm going to so that when you look at your notes, you're like, oh, these are y values. Now, we said solid or hollow? Hollow. Hollow. So big radius squared minus small radius squared dy. And this is exactly what I do when I'm solving these problems for myself. I know it's hollow. Do we know it's hollow? OK. Big radius squared minus small radius squared. All I have to do is figure out how long is the big radius. We start on the axis and we go out this way. 
<laughs> How long is that? Well, it's y equals the square root of x. That's how long. The problem, though, is dy integral. So you're going to say y squared is equal to x. And so this is y squared squared. No, isn't that the Isn't that the wrong one? Yeah. Well, it's y equals x squared. Damn. No. So it's, it's square root of y. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this guy on here, you're right, I'm sorry, I'm just jealous because everyone's so much smarter. Y equals x squared, we're good? Yes. You can't say x squared here because it's dy. So you're going to solve this and you're going to say square root of y is equal to x. Now technically you should say plus or minus the square root of y. Because you took the square root of both sides. But it's going to be positive. The positive or the negative? Positive. Positive because you're on the right. So square root of y, the whole thing squared. Your inside radius starts here and goes to this guy here, which is square root of x. Square both sides. Everybody okay with y squared is equal to x? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's your small radius. And the last thing, tap it into the calculator. <laughs> and you're going to get a little pissy. I, I feel teeth sucking coming. Oh, there it is. The setup looks different. Oh, yeah. That's what you do. Somebody no. type this into the calculator. Everybody type this into the calculator. Is it or is it not the same? Is it? Is it the same? Well, do it like you do. Is it like a boy? I think it is the same. It should be. It's like a if all goes well, Mr. 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 I now, now hold on, because I'm afraid Jackie's walking out and she's like, well, the heck with going around the y-axis, I'm going to just go around the x-axis and get the same thing. It has to do with these particular graphs and the symmetry of what was going on. That's not a conversation I want to worry about. But nice job, tonight's homework. Two problems.